Hi students, uh, I would like to talk to you a little bit about Stevie Smith uh, and her poem um, on the way to Porlock. Uh, thoughts about the person from Porlock. It's a wonderful poem and there's a number of things that I'd like to say about it very quickly for you. And uh, as NAEL suggests, she's a writer who stands outside almost all the writing of the 20th century doesn't fit into a movement, and I think that's part of her feminist approach, perhaps. And as a feminist myself, it's fun for me to read her writing. She is making fun of Coleridge, the great, inimitable, uh, brilliant uh, genius Coleridge, and saying, yeah, you can make fun of men. Uh, yeah, you can make fun of the great male poets, and particularly the great... Uh, the big six, the, the male romantics, and she's in that tradition of women writers saying, hey, you know, get back down to earth a little bit. Uh, us women are down here doing all the work for you so that you can do your abstract and cos uh, cosmic writing. Um, you know, she's playing on the form of the footnote uh, or the gloss, um, that Coleridge writes in the uh, footnote that, you know, he was interrupted when he was writing Kubla Khan, and so the poem itself has fallen from the uh, brilliance of the originary first stanza into the uh, supposed uh, pedestrian nature of the second stanza of Kubla Khan. And so um, Stevie Smith is doing a, a um, footnote on the footnote uh, that Coleridge has written, and there's a number of things that I think she's saying. I think that she, uh, you know, is looking, she's su suggesting, like Joyce, that there's always more you can say about an incident. There's always more you can say about humanity. There's always more details. Even if they're funny details, they're important details, and her details end up being a riff on a riff on a riff. And uh, she enters almost a fugue state. It's ja The poem is jazz-like in those riffs that it goes off on. But each riff, even though it's funny, seems like it's moving us to a level of also importance. For example, in the third to the last, no, in the penultimate stanza, she writes about to the purpose of one above who is experimenting. Um, she is ultimately going to God here in this poem and how God is playing with us uh, and the different admixtures of personalities and characters that come together in the world. And all that she has produced from this footnote of this guy uh, coming from Porlock coming to knock on the door of Coleridge and interrupt his writing. And then she has this wonderful play with um, childish language, uh, in, inane language, and thus securing this idea that all language is essentially inane in terms of the way deconstruction has shown us that it is inane when she says, may we inquire the name of the person from Porlock? Why Porson? So she's making fun of Porson, uh, person and Porlock, binding them together. Uh, he lived at the bottom of Porlock Hill, so had a long way to go. His mother was a warlock. Well, one of the Ruthlandshire ones, I fancy, making fun of the upper class there as well. And then she moves on from that riff to, I long for the person from Porlock to interrupt my life. I hunger for interruption, uh, perhaps for com communion with another person uh, coming into one's life, perhaps the ultimate person coming into our lives, death. Um, I felicitate the people who have a person from Porlock to break up everything and throw it away because then there will be nothing to keep them and they need not stay. 
And so I would suggest to you that those are a number of things that happen in this quite wonderful poem suggesting that, yes, as with the doodle you see for waving, not drowning, yes, this poem may seem like a doodle, as women's work does seem like a doodle or a gloss or a footnote to the importance of men's writing. But certainly I hope you can see that Stevie Smith has an original voice, a powerful voice, a unique voice, a fun voice, and it makes us go in many directions. This portion from Porlock.